Hello and welcome to the Controller Chronicles HD. In this installment, I'm talking about the Sega Genesis 3-button pad, the Sega Genesis Model 1650. This controller was originally released alongside the Mega Drive's release in 1988 and the Sega Genesis' was released in 1989. Um, this is the launch model controller as you can tell by it having the red buttons and the red lines around its D-pad. Um, subsequent versions that came out later, um, for the three-button pad, in, in North America at least, um, replaced the colored buttons by having just black buttons um, that didn't have the, um, that, that had sort of like the indent of the A, B, and C buttons, but didn't actually light, uh, brightly light up as the uh, red paint is on them. Um, I'm not sure if this was the case in Europe, but it was definitely the case in North America. So... The three-button Genesis pad was the launch model controller that you had, and at the time, this controller was really mind-boggling because, for one thing, it's just shaped very differently than the rectangular design controllers that you got from Nintendo and even NEC at the time. Um, people were used to, you know, the box, the NES-001 controller, or, I'm not, it's, sorry, it's the NES-004 controller, and, um, for instance, the um, the turbo pad for the Sega, uh, for the, um, NEC TurboGrafx-16 and PC Engine in Japan. So for Sega to choose this bold design that you know deviates even from their Master System controller was really something that was um, the sign of the 16-bit generation really kicking off with a big bang with a different controller um, even though that the controller doesn't actually offer more buttons than what you get with an actual Famicom. Here you have you have your three um, action buttons, and you have a start button. On the NES and Famicom, you'd have you, you'd have the two action buttons, and you'd have a start and select buttons. Um, in much the same way as select, the A button here actually operates as like your secondary button that's not very used um, in most games, or if it is used, it's used as like a bomb or something, as some sort of secondary fire. Um, most games use the B and C buttons, and this is a little bit counterintuitive to, you know, Nintendo fans that would be using the, you know, B and A buttons, um, but for most Genesis games, you'd have, you know, this being your, your, your shot or your, your fire button, um, this is your jump button, and this is like an auxiliary button, um, and then, you, of course, you've got your start button. Um, what's different about the stock Genesis controller than later versions is this one here is um, actually has a bit of a different D-pad than what you'd normally see from Sega's 16-bit generation controllers if you've um, played a lot of uh, different Genesis controllers. For one thing here, this controller does not um, move very much. This D-pad doesn't move very much. It doesn't have the sort of wild movements that um, the later 6-button and even the later 3-button controllers have. Um, it's just got a little bit of stiffness here, and I actually like this um, more than I think I, I think I initially would. Um, I originally wanted to pick up one of these controllers just for the sake of you know having one, and just for for, for historical reasons, like hey, hey, look, this is the controller that launched alongside the Genesis controller, or lo alongside the Genesis, and then was eventually replaced um, with just the black button versions, and then replaced eventually with a sick button controller. Um, What's kind of neat about this controller is that it can be used in addition to playing Sega Genesis games, but also used on any other DB9 um, operating computer at the time. So your Atari 2600, the Atari 7800, uh, the Commodore 64, and your, you know, even the Master System, um, the Sega's previous system, they could all be played using this controller. And the way it would work on the Master System is this would be um, the one button, and this would be the two button, so you'd have the B and C buttons. You wouldn't use the A button at all. Start would be, you know, un unoperative as well because you know it was right on the system itself that was start. So this controller is actually, um, you know, there's a lot of different opinions on this controller. Some people think that it was just huge and, you know, really, really just a monster, and it didn't have a great D-pad. I do agree that when you were a kid, you know, this was a giant controller. You put your hands on this and you're, you know, you're a little kid and you have small hands. Like, man, this is a ginormous controller. But I always liked that it has these sur uh, curved sides here that, you know, really fit your hands very well. And it's like a natural fit for your, for your hands as opposed to the boxy design for the NES. You know, that was something that always kind of bugged me. But, you know, you got used to it. Um, the D-pad here, again, is not that disc thing that would be in later Genesis controllers. This is actually a really similar uh, D-pad to um, what you'd see on like the Master System, but it's actually a better D-pad than what you see on the Master System, because that just had like a square thing. Um, 
One thing that kind of sucks about this is the controller cord itself is often very short. Um, I don't know what it was with Sega back then, but they gave you very short cords, and the cords that were, um, you know, about three or four feet long, you know, as opposed to what they would be in North America, which are, you know, the typical feet, uh, controller length of, you know, six, six feet or so. So, you know, giving you these really short cords um, was something that kind of irked me. Um, luckily, the controller boards are, generally speaking, all, you know, interchangeable. So what I did was I took um, a, another controller that I have that's a 3-button Genesis controller um, that's a later version, and I, you know, took its PCB out, I desoldered the, uh, the, the cord off of it, and now I have a 6-foot cord attached to a original model, um, launch model Sega Genesis controller. So, is this controller really, really worth picking up? Well, I actually think that it is, because, um, for one thing, it's got a better D-pad than, than the later Genesis controllers, and also, most Genesis games don't actually use the X, Y, and Z buttons that are on top. Those buttons were re added later, and, you know, they're not needed for most games. Unless you're going to be playing, like, Street Fighter or a fighting game or something, if you're playing most Genesis games, you know, they just need the B and C buttons, and then the A button, I guess, with, the, like, the uh, auxiliary fire. So, you know, Genesis controllers, um, you know, are pretty, pretty fantastic. They can be used on the Mega Drives, um, either from Japan or Europe. They're, they're region-free, so, you know, if you want to pick one of these up, you know, you can definitely go in, ahead and do that. So, anyway, that'll about do it for this video. So, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions about this original Genesis controller, um, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to hit the like button, because hitting the like button helps support my channel and lets me know that you guys want to see more videos like this. So, until next time, thanks for watching. There it is. Model 1650.